I had a conversation with Bobby Wernis a couple of well, a few days ago in Knoxville about how do you remember what day it is when you're in professional baseball, especially when Bobby played in the complex leagues in Florida, where legitimately every day feels like the day it was before. You don't know Saturday from from Tuesday from Thursday. Um, so, I and I'm a little thrown off now too. But it feels like Wednesday to me. Because that's when Clay Henry usually comes on with us. The uh, the publisher and editor of Hogs Illustrated is with us today. It's Thursday. Clay, I need you to reset my uh, my body clock. Can you help me out okay. here? Okay. Yeah. It's, okay. It's Thursday. I, okay. It's good. Thursday. So I know what day it is because I I've, I've got to start thinking about a column for the Saturday paper, and so a lot of times I write it on Thursday because I don't want it to be hanging over me on Friday. I, I've I really like to be way ahead of deadlines and to be just kind of cruising. And of course, th- that's dangerous sometimes because something will happen to ruin that column and you have to redo it. Um, you know, it's, I was really nervous. So we sent our summer football preview to the press Tuesday. Uh, and so Tuesday, uh, I guess it was, oh, no, Monday night. Uh, Sam Pittman spoke in Harrison, so I was like, okay, this is kind of my last time to make sure everybody's eligible. There are none of the guys that I wrote features about. He's going to get up there and say, this guy didn't make his grades, or this guy's in the portal. <laughs> you know, it could, right. it could be all. So, I, you know, more than anything, I went just to kind of feel comfortable that I could pull the trigger and let that magazine go to the press. I really wish Ty Richardson was listening right now, Clay, because you just explained reasons why you would be nervous about something. Nothing had to do with one team beating another team. It was about having the, you know, the, the accurate information inside your magazine. Job. That to me, that's what my job, that's what you want to be nervous about, not someone else's job on the field, right? <laughs> that's correct. You know, I don't worry about, you know, well, what's, how, how's this going to make the fans feel? I, that's not, that's not my job. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, mm-hmm. Do you got a preview uh, but, into what you uh what 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 what's at the top of your head? What do you think you want to write about on Saturday, or do you not divulge that? Oh, I that? think I think that I was not going to do this, uh, but everybody else has. It's going to be about Texas, I think, and everybody's talked about Texas all week. I know Ty had uh, Chuck Dykeson, um one day this week. He'd asked me, Ty asked me who would be good, and I gave him a list of about ten different names and said any of these. You know, from different eras, could be good on on playing Texas, and you know, I mentioned Bill Montgomery and Chuck Dykus and Matt Jones and uh, Harold Horton or Ken Hatfield. And, you know, there's just a lot. You know, that, that have been through. You know, a hundred years of playing Texas. That are, you know, if they're still alive, <laughs> I mean, they, and they all, they, it's it's all a different period, a different time frame, different. And I said, then you can talk to guys from Texas that played against Texas. And of course, the, the the greatest one would have been Lloyd Phillips, who passed away last year, who was a guy that Texas did not recruit and then came here and was the best player in America and played in a rage three straight years against Texas, and Arkansas went 3-0, uh, 64, 65, 66. And I, you'll be hard-pressed to find... You know, a three-year starter for Arkansas that has a 3-0 and record against Texas, and Lloyd had that. Clay Henry joining us here on halftime. Clay, when you, I want to ask you a little bit more about this Arkansas Texas matchup because you've sure, obviously you've you've been there since. I mean, you've been covering this since way back in the Southwest Conference, years. fifty years. So you know, yeah. you know what this rivalry means to both states. I mean, maybe not so much now with Texas, but what it means here in Arkansas because, like you just mentioned, the excitement level that's. Been throughout this state with it, with this game being announced prime time. What needs to happen in your mind? Because we still got some time to build this thing up. But Clay, this matchup feels like this thing. Maybe not an every year thing, Clay, but like a every other year, every four years. Arkansas, Texas, Texas needs to become like the game again. Don't you think so? Well, um, you know, you want to have you know different Power Five teams on the schedule. I mean, I. And, you know, I'll be excited to see Notre Dame. So you're not mm-hmm. going to play Texas and Notre Dame in the same year, you know, as non-conference games. You know, they've got they've got BYU and Utah. I think some other teams that that's interesting to me. And I, I would I would really enjoy you know going out west 
and I have my motivations. You know, there's some great trout fishing in those areas. <laughs> um, so, I mean, but that's just selfish, being me. But it so, but every once in a while, playing Texas would be good. And I, you know, I don't think you have to do it every year. Uh, you 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 need you know you've got Texas A and M, so you've got a Texas president on, presence right. on your schedule. So, but I I think just to remind everybody the history and you know what's gone on you know with arkansas there, there's a lot of young people that when you say you hate texas they don't get it and they don't understand it it's just you know and texas hasn't been good so why would you you know why would that be a feeling and but i mean there's there's a lot of people my age when you know it's a good weekend when the razorbacks lose and it's a better weekend when the razorbacks i mean when they win and texas loses you know, you you know, you keep up. Did yeah. Texas lose? I guarantee you, you know, that Arkansas plays during the daytime and, and Texas is playing that night in, you know, a Big 12 game, and I'll flip over there, and if Iowa State's pounding on them, I'll watch it. If Texas is winning, then I'll move on to something else. So now I got a really unique perspective on Texas. Um for 14 years, I was at the Tulsa World, and I always – I did not cover one team. It rotated. I got the good game every week. So I might see Oklahoma, Texas in the Cotton Bowl one week, and then the very next week, Arkansas and Texas played. Hmm. And it was a much bigger game for Texas to play Oklahoma than it was for Texas to play Arkansas. And that was a great spot on the schedule for Arkansas – because they got, you know, they got to beat up Texas team a lot of times. Maybe beat up emotionally if, you know, if if Oklahoma had wrecked their season the week before. So what you have to remember about Texas is Arkansas is not their rival because they have oftentimes seven, eight, nine rivals. Every school in Texas felt the same way about Texas as Arkansas did. So. That's that's the perspective that you have to remember, and I don't care. I'd be, you, you know, it's still a rival for Arkansas that week. You know, one th- one interesting thing about that Clay is, that as much as Arkansas fans hate Texas, and it's it's subsided. You're right over the over these last you know long time now because you haven't played them Didn't on a play consistent them. basis. A and M fans hate them more. I think I think well, Texas A and M fans yeah. hate Texas te- hate the Texas Longhorns even more. And they still don't play them either. And it's more out of not playing them now that they hate them. Because <laughs> they really would like to. And you know the other thing about this too, Clay? So we're all fired up about Arkansas-Texas football in September 11th, ESPN 6 o'clock. Good reason to be. These baseball teams may meet up in Omaha, you know? They've already played in, in Arlington, and that was a pretty uh, emotional game because of that. You remember, I mean, Elijah Tresta, the horns down during the national anthem for the oh, fans yeah. behind the dugout to see. And Texas is playing great baseball now. I think Arkansas and Texas may meet in Omaha. So let's get that rivalry, which, all the, by the way, the baseball teams really do have a rivalry because they have been playing for the last few years. Yeah, and that's not the first time in the last few years that an Arkansas player has done that to no. because it was uh, oh it was a non conference game at Baum and it was Matt Cronin it was just kind of blossoming as a closer and he shut down the horns and on the final strike three he looked in the dugout and did a downward hook 'em and he said you know his mother grew up in Jacksonville and he said she taught me that. So that's what that's our responsibility to the youngsters is to teach them that. You know, what it means and what it means for an Arkansas player to do that. And, you know, you can say, well, you know, Cops is, you know, greatest closer. And, well, Cronin was pretty good, and he also has that legacy of doing the downward horns, which he celebrated. I interviewed him. He, he didn't dodge it. He goes, oh, yeah, I did that, and I did it again. <laughs> oh, yeah, Matt, Matt of that. Matt's not going to dodge a moment like that. I don't think there's any. And I love the idea of, like, Tress doing it. Cops is too. I don't think cops would do it. But I no, love that's the idea not cop te- style. Texas well, she's from kid. Texas. Yeah. I love the idea of Texas kids doing it to the Longhorn. I also love the idea that if you're fishing for cold water bass on Beaver Lake or Table Rock or fishing for a trophy brown trout on the mighty White River, the Smithwick original suspending Rattlin' Rogue will catch them. 
It's got that famous rolling action, whether it's fished extremely low or work fast and heavy current. This Rogue suspends, so it will stay in the strike zone longer, allows you to catch more fish. It's available at Walmart, Bass Pro Shops, Academy, LearnNet.com, and tackle stores all over the place. The Smithwick Original Suspending Rattler Rogue. More with Clay Henry right after this on Halftime. Clay Henry with us uh, for the rest of this this hour. So uh, one more segment with the publisher and editor of Hogs Illustrated. Phil Elson as well, Matt Smackdown Jenkins, Matthew Master Travis. Got any texts for Clay? Questions? 877-377-6963. Uh, Clay, you got baseball tonight, hopefully, uh, Florida in town. You know, I was, we were getting into this yesterday a little bit. Major League Baseball is a little unwatchable on television. I don't like baseball and TV to begin with. I'd go to a big league game in person. I don't care what, what's going on, but it is kind of tough to watch with, with, without a lot of balls put into play. I feel like college baseball is a better overall product and there aren't as many strikeouts. There's more balls put into play. Um, I don't know. And, and, and I told, I told someone who comes on the show with this yesterday, like, if I heard myself 20 years ago say this, I would have kicked myself in the face. But I really do believe it. I think college baseball is a better product right now than the big leagues. Well, part of what's happened on the big league level, which makes it distasteful, is how expensive it's gotten. And that's the, that's what's been good about minor league baseball. But it's starting to creep up there, too, in price. Now, I will say this about Arkansas baseball. It's, it's, it's going up in price, too. It's gone up lately. And there was, for a long time, there was a you know, segment of, of our fan base that gravitated towards baseball because it was really affordable. I'm talking about seniors and, and you know, people on um, fixed income. And, you know, you, you could buy a season ticket for, you know, or two of them, and it wasn't an arm and a leg. So you saw a lot of ret- retirees at the games. And, you, you know, same thing goes for, you know, women's Arkansas women's basketball that's, mm-hmm. you know, an affordable ticket on campus that's exciting. So, I, you know, I kind of hate that, you know, the college baseball is starting to, to get up there in price too. But but you're right about the product in the competitiveness of the game and the back and forth and it's you know uh you know the leads are not safe you know there's there's great comebacks in college baseball you do not see the great comebacks in professional baseball because the bullpens are so solid in, in most mm-hmm. levels right yeah i think you're right yeah you know one thing i did notice and this is on the this is on prices um, at South Carolina and at Tennessee, I think we've done pretty good, pretty good job at Baumwalker Stadium of at least keeping the concessions prices low. I honestly don't know what the ticket prices are because I don't have to buy tickets. But I have used my concession vouchers, so I do see what the prices of a soda costs. And to get the to get the souvenir drink at Baumwalker Stadium is cheaper than it is at South Carolina. It's cheaper than it is at LSU and at Tennessee. I'm not surprised. So, yeah, yeah I'm not, not surprised. at all. They do a pretty good job with that. Now let's go to the game on the field here this weekend. Um, Florida is really good. This is a team that probably has more at stake than Arkansas does. Uh, just in the overall scheme of the national tournament. Of course, the Hogs want to win the, nat- won the SEC regular season. Florida does, too. Both teams have a shot at it. Um, if, lo- if Arkansas were to lose this weekend, which I don't think they will, do you, th- you still think that the, that the committee would look at them as an overall number one seed? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, just, just based on their non-conference. And that's, the, that's what you look at some of these other teams. Their non-conference was just nothing. Go through the you know, some of those RPI sites and look at, see, you know, the non-conference record, the non-conference, you know, quadrant one, and they won't list like top 10 or top 15 victories, but Arkansas's in their road record. And what you do on the road is really significant in the eyes of, of the committee. And Arkansas's road record is just off the charts. And then they've got the neutral site games in, in Arlington, those three games, Went in a series at Louisiana Tech. There's all those things that, that add up, um, you know, to that. And, and Florida is, is really good, and it would not be, say, you know, a, a huge blow if they weren't successful, you know, these three games. Um, Florida is really good, and they are talented. If you want to you see a team that's physical and looks the part, Florida, 
they always do. Um, I think Kevin O'Sullivan is one of the you know one of the really talented recruiters that's out there, and their ability to find baseball talent in Florida is is huge. A couple more minutes here with Clay Henry. Clay, we broke the news yesterday. We semi broke the news, and then it was confirmed later on in the afternoon, going a hundred percent full capacity for the rest of the season inside yep. Bomb Stadium, Bogle Park, and then not only for this weekend for Florida, but heading into the regionals and super regionals, hopefully for both of these teams and. Clay, for a team that's been playing in front of advertised full capacity, this will be a huge difference maker for both the baseball and softball teams getting 100%. And I can only imagine for a fan base, and we'll we'll focus this more on baseball for it, for a fan base that's been clamoring to see an opportunity to see this number one ranked team in the country, Bob Stadium for the rest of this baseball season is going to be off the chains as far as excitement level, the atmosphere, and that could prove to be paid big dividends for this team moving forward. Yeah, I think that in it it's not just the fans are going to have fun. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it, there's nothing like being a fan and walking into the stadium and taking your seat and you know, watching the thing fill up and then the you know, as through warm-ups and then, you know, the, the national anthem and you you're standing up and you're looking around and and to see what the hog pen's going to be like and then, you know, it's being able to call the hogs when you know, when so- something good happens and, and impact the game, that's what's fun. I mean, it's fun for the fans as much as it is for the players. And I, I know Dave Van Horn has talked about how, you know, they have so much ached to, you know, this is a team, they they want to sh- they want to show out in front of their fans. Absolutely. And they, they know they've been watched. They get that feeling that, you know, the whole state and the fan base is, is – you know, sitting on the edge of their chair for all these comebacks, but dead gum, you know, it's this is what they came to Arkansas. They, you know, there's guys that have come from out of state because they made a visit and saw 11,000 or 12,000 or 13,000 for a series, and they were in here and they haven't gotten to experience that, and now they will. It's going to be fun to really see this thing come out. Got two text messages or questions they want to ask Clay. If you've got any real quick questions you want to text them in, shoot them in at 877-377-6963. Brandon in Paris texting, going back to our Texas conversation a moment ago. Uh, he Brandon asked, Clay, would you give up losing a series in baseball to Texas for a blowout win against Texas in football? I won't give up anything. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> I, I want it all. I mean, it's like... So that's kind of like saying, okay, instead of getting two scoops of ice cream, you're only going to get one. Is that good enough? Uh, no. That's a, that's a great. No, that's a I great. want it all. <laughs> that's right. He's and, Freddie Mercury. He wants it all. He wants it all. He wants great, it all, and he wants it now. now. That's a great question. This is a good one from my friend, our buddy Jeff Taylor over at Jeff's Clubhouse. And this could back go into your column that you write for Saturday's paper. Clay, what's the happiest moment you've been covering Arkansas sports and beating Texas? Say it again. Say it again. Clay's happiest moment beating Texas. Oh, they all are. I mean, I, I just mean, one stand it, out over the they, other. No, no. It just I would say, <laughs> I would say that pretty good. You know, in um, I was probably really too small to understand the significance in '64. I will say that I participated in honking the horns. So I, we lived in Metacliff in 1964. Arkansas, it was not on TV, the games at night, listening on the radio. And my mother and father are both at the game. My mother brought back grass from the spot where the two-point conversion was denied, and my dad planted in the backyard. But my grandmother kept us, and we laid on the floor, me and my three brothers, and listened to the game. And when it was over... We went outside in Meadowcliff, southwest Little Rock, and there's two cars in the, in the driveway, and we honked horns. And that's what happened all across the, 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 you know, the, the city, I know, and I'm sure across the state, people honked their horns in a, in a awesome. car that was parked. And you could hear the honking of the horns all across the neighborhood, all across the state. And I, I don't know that that's ever happened. So that was fun because we went out there and two brothers got in one car and two brothers got in the other and just started honking the horns because that's what everybody else was doing. And it was an incredible sound. So I remember that, and I wasn't even at the game. 
My favorite moment, and it's not football, is Heston Kerstad very politely shoving the Texas first baseman oh, off yeah. the first oh, that base. Was, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The that College was good, World yeah. Series. Uh, and oh, I yeah. love that, that the best me, the best Arkansas versus Texas meme is that one. You, you, for all the stuff that might happen yeah. in football, um, well, that's still the best one. That inning, you know, where they came back after the, the rain that's delay right. and mm-hmm. pounding on them, you know, and it was like, there was all kinds of talk, and this was going to derail the Arkansas, you know, victory. You know, like, they're they're on their way when it happens. And what's going to happen? I mean, I heard all the talk, you know, in the press box. This is a great, this is great for Texas. You know, all the national writers, Texas will, no. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> it great, yeah. It yeah, just the, got I, worse. I remember, Clay, they were trailing going into that inning. Coach DeBrine came into the booth, and things started to happen. And Kerstad very politely nudges the first baseman out of the way and Cody Clemens comes up to him and says hey don't do that to my buddy and then Luke Bonfield hits a two run homer for the lead and then Arkansas Cruz they're off to the races that's exactly right I'll remember that remember that till I die Clay appreciate you man thanks so much thanks Clay Uh, yo we always have fun thanks we do All right. so I'll know it's Wednesday when he's with us next week not Thursday but today is Thursday Today is Thursday, right? Yes, today's Thursday. You're sure about that? It is. All day long? All right, and it'll continue into the afternoon on Thursday after this.